Bluff Knoll, the peak of the Stirling Ranges. It's the only place in Western Australia that gets snow. It's a popular spot for bushwalkers and the setting for our next story. It's a good lesson on what to do when you're stuck in this kind of place. In fact, once he was stuck, there's only one thing the man you are about to meet didn't quite get right. See if you can pick it. I went up onto the top of Bluff Knoll and over to the back, back area there, to, and, but I couldn't find the trail that runs off of Bluff Knoll onto the ridge. Former Shire engineer John Hull was 55 years old when he decided to take a day hike in the Stirling Ranges in the summer of 1985. My biggest area was going, going down there where there was no track. You know, if I, I should have persisted in, in, until I'd found the, the, the ridgewall entrance rather than go you know, tearing off and chomping my way through the, the scrub. John trapped himself in thick scrub. He couldn't go down, nor backtrack uphill. He was stuck. I had um, some sandwiches and an apple, and <laughs> enough for, uh, you know, it's quite sufficient for a day, but uh, not a bit light on for three days, as it turned out to be. John settled in for the night, and the next day he tried again to retrace his footsteps uphill. And I was just thinking, yippee, I'm going to make this when I hit about the last 20 metres of bush up against the vertical face, which is so, so it was thick from top to bottom, so you couldn't climb over it, you couldn't get underneath it. The only thing to do would be to, to bash it down, and it was pretty solid stuff. By this time, of course, having a limited water supply, it was getting a bit dry, and I thought, well, I'm not, I'm better not sort of make a big effort in the heat of the day, so I just laid down and had a rest. That night it rained, which made me cold and shivery, but it was uh, uh, certainly welcome. I, I uh, kept the towel on top. I stayed out in the, in the rain and sort of with, with my mouth open, more or less, and soaked the towel and sucked on that. And uh, then early in the morning, I got up and went round the vegetation and, and um, so about filled my water bottle, I suppose about quarter full from uh, dripping uh, uh, leaves. The day before, I'd, I'd picked leaves and put them in the, in the plastic bag that I had my sandwiches in, and I got a certain amount of water out of that. Uh, but um, the, uh, the taste of eucalypt is a acquired taste. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I want to touch uh, too much of it again. On the third day, while staying put on a soft grass bed which he'd made, an aircraft passed overhead. John frantically waved his towel to signal, but the aircraft flew away. For nearly an hour, he had no idea if he'd been spotted. Then I got a call from on top of the cliff, and, you know, from there on it. Was, uh chap came down and said, boy, am I glad to see you. And I said, not half as glad as I am to see you. And <laughs> that was it. The rescue party cleared a path for John and helped him out. He was shocked to find that police, state emergency service volunteers and local park rangers had been looking for him. In all, a search party of 95 people. John gets bonus points for not panicking, and once comfortable, he conserved energy and fluid by staying put. He was in a high area where he could be seen from the air, and he used his limited resources well to collect water. But the only thing he didn't get quite right was the transpiration method of gathering water. That's where you use sunlight, leaves, and a plastic bag. But you don't take the leaves off the tree because the water comes up from the roots you can get a clear plastic bag and try this at home on any eucalypt or wattle. Just try to pick a branch that's in the sunlight. Get as many leaves as we possibly can, then we'll get more water.
That looks pretty good. Now we've got to seal this nice and tight. I've got a bit of string here. Any space here, I'll let water vapour out. And we're trying to catch the water vapour. To get a really good seal, we could put a sock in there, any kind of clothing or cloth, just to make sure that no water vapour escaped. This little peg will just hold the corner down so that the water collects here and doesn't run away down the stem. It started to fog up already. After about six hours, look at this. Beautiful fresh water. A few cupfuls to keep you out of trouble. For John Hull, there are a few lessons from his ordeal he'll never forget. First of all, uh, if you're going to do something out of the ordinary, it's best not to do it on your own. Uh, secondly, um, have regard to the power of gravity, which makes it very easy to get down, uh, but considerably more difficult to get up. That's all for this week. But next week, we go to Kakadu where six lost school kids got a first-hand lesson in survival. We'll examine the mysterious tragedy of Jackaroos, Amos and Annette, and then south to a deadly snowstorm in Tasmania. He made the most extraordinary and heroic efforts to bring everybody back safely. Plus loads of survival tips. That's out there next week. I'll see you then.